I was first exposed to domestic violence as a child. Only at that time I didn't know it had a name. It was something that happened in the home. It was something you didn't talk about. Um, it was normal for us. So later on, as I got into my own relationships, I met the father of my children. He was with a group of friends and he kind of like claimed me. From that moment, he actually took control over the relationship. It was something I was okay with because that's what I was used to growing up. I moved in with them very quickly, like within two months I was pregnant already. So everything went really fast. We didn't really know each other. So the argument started to escalate and it didn't get bad until I had my daughter. I honestly don't remember why we were arguing. I remember I was holding my daughter and we we're just going back and forth. I remember he slapped me and I stood in shock like, what's happening? He came to me and he apologized and he was crying and he told me he's sorry that he knew he had problems with anger. And um, I felt like I needed to fix things. I felt like it was my place to make things better. Like, okay, let's fix you. But in reality, I wasn't the one that had the problem. Her story is almost my story. As for myself, I wasn't aware that I was in what would be called a, an abusive sort of situation. I had no idea. I remember waking up every day thinking, how can I keep him happy today? The abuse became more frequent. Um, there were no more apologies. I remember I got pregnant a second time and he wasn't happy. Um, so he caused me to miscarry. I was about close to four months when I miscarried. That was the first time I left him. Within a few weeks, he started coming around and he just won me over, so I went back. Um, but then this time around, the abuse was almost every day. I was very depressed. I was very, very depressed. My self-esteem was gone. It was gone. I contemplated suicide very much. I remember times when I would tell him, you know, I need help. I need help because I'm going to kill myself. And his response was, go ahead, you're a waste of life anyway. You lose yourself. You lose your self-worth and who you are and you have no confidence. And you're like a young child in an adult body who doesn't know what to do. I started isolating myself from family. I started isolating myself from friends. And when the only person that's left in your life is the abuser, it's very difficult to regain yourself. I think what really kept me going were my kids. They were the only thing I had. It's hard to figure out how you're gonna find the strength, but one way or another, you're gonna pull it out and you're gonna find it. What happened was I found out he was cheating and something sparked within me. It was an anger I had never felt before. And I went from being very meek and mild and scared to extremely strong. And within that moment, I confronted him. I always knew he was cheating. He had several affairs. This one was different. This was a friend of mine. I sent him all the emails that I had been sent. He got upset with me. Why was I getting in his business, that it's not my place? And he started to hit me. And then as he's hitting me, my daughter got in the middle and he ended up socking her in the face and something just snapped. So I grabbed my kids and I ran to the, to the room and I barricaded it and he started telling us that he was gonna kill us. And I remember my window was like eight feet away, but it felt like it was miles away because I just kept praying that I had the strength to take my kids and take them out that window because I knew we were gonna die. So that's when I called the police. They came and they asked you all kinds of questions. And, and he's asking me, how many times has it happened? Like more than once? I'm like, yeah, more than once, more than two times. I didn't know that when you don't report abuse, it's considered negligence. So my kids were in a foster home. He was in jail and I was by myself. But for the first time in 10 years, I, I slept good. For the first time in 10 years, I, I took a breath and I knew I was okay. I remember driving down the street and thinking, oh my God, I'm free. I felt so free to be free of that person and to finally feel yourself, but also so much fear. And afterwards I broke down and it was actually my mother-in-law 
who said to me, get up, you have a family, you have to do this. Things start to build and you start to learn and people start to help you and you grow and you move forward. I could have easily killed myself or I could have gone and used drugs or I could have fought for my kids. And that day I made the decision to fight for my kids and they were the only thing that I focused on. So I started calling social workers and I started calling agencies and I, I started to regain control of my life. I started to regain control of myself. My children were returned to me with the condition that I had to go back to my parents' house. So within two weeks, I had my kids again. My life changed. My life changed and I began to see color. I began to see life, to feel and to hear. Life just began to open up. So I started volunteering with the organization that I work with now, which is called Peace Over Violence. By helping others, little by little, you start to heal yourself. And then within six months, they offered me a job working. I was like, oh my God, <laughs> I'm in heaven. <laughs> it's just having that extra support that can help a survivor. It really changed my life. You know, don't lose hope because life gets better. We all have something that hurt us or something that hurts us in our past. Tattoo is a very healing thing to very, very many people. Being able to see it every day and remind them to move forward and seeing that tattoo helps them to do that. I want to help someone represent that growth and that person they found within themselves so they didn't know that they had.